I was on a quest to find my bucket list car. How's it going? Love your car! Since May 2017, I've been hitting the road, focusing on New Mexicans and their rides. It's always as much about the owner as it is their car and what they do to it. So come along, take a ride with us on the Auto Ambush. I'm Eric Green, this is the Auto Ambush. Let's get going. Auto Ambush was originally a pretty informal idea. They told me to just go out and find a cool and or interesting car and try to get the owner to talk about it. Well, this is our very first Auto Ambush, Bob Padilla's Jalapeno Express. Painted up in John Deere green and yellow, I think we were driving on 4th Street when I saw it drive past. It caught my eye right away. Hey, how's it going? My name's Eric Green. I uh, work at Channel 7. Don't know if you ever watch the weather in the morning, yes, but I, do. I, I love cars. And uh, we're working on a new series called Auto Ambush. Since then, we haven't missed a beat, digging into the vibrant background of New Mexico's car scene. Of course, we have classic American muscle cars covered, but there's so much more. The exotics, both vintage and new, are always amazing. Those are fun rides. And this state is crawling with old hot rods, some of which are the deceptive resto mods, where they look like an old classic on the outside, but are modern underneath. We've been to car shows, hung out with car clubs, and even went to a high school auto shop class. Many of the auto ambushes have been with women and their special cars. Think, For right? Christmas, my husband said, would you like jewelry? And I said, no, I'd like a bigger engine. And trucks. New Mexicans love trucks, and we've been able to see some great ones. One time, I even had to share my seat in a pickup with two dogs. When it comes to cars, speed is a big selling point, and the name Unser is synonymous with racing. So we had to come to the Unser Race Museum. Come on in. Honoring the late Al Unser Sr., he won the Indy 500 four times. The Albuquerque native ties with two other drivers for the most wins ever in the annual race. And of course, his brother Bobby won three times, Al Jr. twice, nine wins for one family. The racing family dynasty has certainly put New Mexico on the car map. We also have Route 66 running right through the middle of our state. We are a car people, and what a great place to be today as we look back at five years of auto ambushes. We begin with the rides you can't help but do a double take on with their style and presence, American muscle cars. These are what really got me into cars as a kid. Muscle cars were originally all about a smaller size vehicle with the biggest engine possible. After all, acceleration comes down to power to weight ratio. These cars were incredibly popular back in the day and those still left today command big price tags and a ton of respect. The first muscle car is considered to be the 1964 GTO. And of course we've seen and driven one. That car was so original, I thought I went back in time. This is my brother-in-law's mother's car. And, uh, I bought it about 40 years ago. GTO, Gran Turismo Omologato. It means certified for racing in the Grand Tourer class. When it came time to make our own auto ambush commercial, of course I chose a GTO, and my friend Annette Torres is 67, is an iconic and beautiful muscle car in black, which was a rare color back in the day. America's original muscle car era was over 50 years ago, but in the late 60s, these cars were more flashy, flamboyant, and powerful year after year. And this one coming up is one of the rawest, most sought after cars to come out of this time period. I was at Mopar Fest last weekend and I found an amazing old muscle car with a really cool owner that I want to tell you about. This is a 1969 and a half uh, Dodge Super B. Built at the peak of America's first muscle car era, this car was specially built for one purpose. The drag racers loved, loved the car. They loved the lift off hood so that they could get under there and work on their car, tinker with it, make it go faster. This may be the only car ever built from the factory without hood hinges. Yes, this hood is designed to lift straight off and set on the roof. Inside the engine bay lies a legend, a 440 topped with a six pack. A six pack is uh, for the carburetors. It has three two barrel carburetors. So three two barrels, six. Dodge only built about 1900 of these drag racer specials and Jared's dad purchased this one way back in 1986 when he was just a toddler. I have some pretty early childhood memories of being in this car and uh, going hot riding in it. His dad has since passed away and Jared calls himself the family caretaker of this muscle car. 
and it's a big responsibility to preserve its original and unrestored history. The interior here, and this all this stuff is original too. Yes, it is. How uh, many miles did you say were on this car? I believe uh, 43, six. Wow, no way. That's an average of less than 1,000 miles a year on this 50-year-old ride. A lot of them put on just a quarter mile at a time. Tell me what kind of reaction you get from people when you're out cruising around in this old car. Uh, every, everybody's uh, taking double takes, a lot of thumbs ups, um, waves. Your dad would be proud, Jared. Another muscle car powerhouse, the Shelby Cobra. Mike Travers of Albuquerque invited me out to the Sandia Speedway on the West Mesa one time, and we did a few laps in a Shelby Cobra replica, and wow, what a machine, and what a rush. I've been a car guy for as long as I can remember. A Cobra was something I always wanted. Mike and his dad built this car to make sure it could handle cruising and racetrack duties. The suspension and engine were built with no expense spared. Looking back, I've been lucky to see some of the absolute best. A real deal Boss 42970 Mustang that looked black with jade green undertones, a ground pounding 70 Buick GS Stage 1. These were torque champions back in the day with those big 455 engines. I will never forget my time with Father Matt and Gallup. The 70 Mercury Cyclone with a 429 and her shifter for his V8s for vocations program was so sweet in that competition green. That car was given away in a raffle. So was this Smokey and the Bandit 1978 Trans Am. We also took a cruise in that one where he told me what that trademark fire breathing bird on the hood meant. Renewed life, is, it was sort of a sign of, uh, for them like of a resurgence in power. That's not all. A real deal Hemi Cuda in that very unusual burnt orange. Super bird with a giant wing, Ron Montoya is always up to share his amazing cars. Super sport Chevelles like the 70 that's still in the hands of its original owner. The 442 John Quinones drove on Good Morning America and newer stuff too, like a Hellcat and a Corvette ZR1. Those are both over 700 horsepower. Some cars blend performance with classic styling, and the Corvette is a great example here. It's hard to believe this beautiful 1963 split window started out as a project rescued from a junkyard. I got it at a junkyard in the South Valley. I literally brought it home in, in, in baskets. In baskets, it still cost him a pretty $15,000, and after his handiwork, it's now probably worth somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 grand. This 1971 454 vet was also brought back from the dead, being in a bad accident just a couple of years before we found it out cruising around one Friday morning in Northeast Albuquerque. But for the ultimate classic car build, you have to see Lyle Greenberg's Corvette funny car. The beautiful body contours are from a 1978 Corvette, but this car is for the drag strip only, stripped of anything not necessary, but also built up with a cage for safety. The 500 cubic inch supercharged V8 runs on nitro methane, which owner Lyle Greenberg says is like liquid dynamite for fuel. These things are, are built for one thing, and that's to accelerate just as fast as you can make it possible. Lyle says that engine makes 4,000 horsepower. Don't worry, he can handle it. He's been on the drag strip since he was a kid. His dad was one of the founders way back in the 60s. Lyle has his funny car all sorted out now, and he's had a very successful spring, winning a lot of races and even taking some first place trophies home, truly following in the footsteps of his father. Ford Thunderbirds are also a blend of style and performance. Most of these are big two-door luxury coupes, and they have loyal followings with dedicated owners. When COVID first hit, we caught the local Thunderbird Club doing a drive-by birthday greeting for another member who couldn't go out. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. It's just, uh, it was like, really, <laughs> unexplainable, really. <laughs> I'm very happy about it, and I figure that in even the worst times, we have to look for the happiness in it. Happiness is a Thunderbird family reunited once again. One of the oldest cars we've ever auto ambushed was up in White Rock near Los Alamos. Cruising in this 1928 Packard was quite a classic car experience. Studebaggers and Packards from the 30s and 40s have amazing lines and are perfect starting points for a custom hot rod. Big old Cadillacs are attention getters, especially this one that has a 502 big block swapped in under the hood. That's a 1959 Series 62. They originally came with 390 engines, so it's making a lot more horsepower than it was born with. And maybe one of the most recognizable classic cars you will ever see is the 57 Chevy, a car that was considered a classic when it came out. 
and I found one in Albuquerque so original, it may still have had dust from 1957 inside of it. This is a survivor, meaning it's never been restored for show or any of that. It's just been maintained and kept the way it was when it was shipped off the line. We've done plenty of cars on the auto ambush, but the only motorcycle we've ever done had a sidecar on it. Now that felt almost too wide open. It's all original paint. Harley doesn't make these bad boys anymore, but when it was purchased over 30 years ago, they were making them every six years. Muscle cars and classics highlight American auto manufacturing at its very best. And many of these cars were fairly affordable to someone with a good paying job. When we dial the price way up, you get exclusivity, cars we don't get to see very often called exotics. And exotic cars are the top of the automotive food chain, from their looks to how they perform. This is all the best of the best. We're talking Ferrari, Porsche, McLaren, Jaguar, and yes, even some American brands dabble in this group. One American exotic that I was lucky enough to be able to profile is the new Ford GT. When Ford reintroduced its legendary racing GT, waiting lists were super long. You had to apply just to get the chance to buy one of these half million dollar cars. But Dennis Snyder at Rich Ford has serious clout, and when his came in, he kindly offered an up-close look and ride. Ford reintroduced the GT for 2017. It is as desirable and about as expensive as cars get. And as far as I know, there's only two of them here in New Mexico. And today I'm gonna to take you to look at and get a ride in one. If you don't show it, they don't want you to have it. You may think Dennis Snyder as president of Rich Ford has the connections to get this car, but he, just like thousands of other people, many celebrities, had to submit an application to purchase this half million dollar ride. And what they suggested is, tell us how you're going to use the car. This car needs to be shown. Ford will only build 1,000 GTs like this. They're about halfway done. And they chose Dennis as one of the lucky few to get one. It's his job now to show off his super exclusive $476,000 toy. Uh, the airfoil comes through here and goes, and that's the ground force. This is to scoop the air in to cool the, the transmission and the engine. The door just lifts up and it comes up such as that. On the road, 647 horsepower will make you say, Oh my God, that is just incredible. Watch the rear wing. At speed, it automatically comes up to provide downforce, hit the brakes, and it turns down to grab the wind and help slow down. Dennis has driven and sold Fords for most of his life. He bleeds Ford blue. And now to have the greatest and most desirable example of the breed. Truly, uh, I'm honored to have a car like this. And when people give you the thumbs up and great, and I go, yeah, thank you. Uh, and you know, you're just blessed. But this blessing comes with a responsibility to show and share. And I think so far, Dennis is living up to his end of the deal. Here's a special one, the Admiral's Ferrari. What a story, when he bought it for $2,000 as a fixer upper back in 1960 so he could go racing, he never dreamed it would become the cherished piece of Ferrari history it grew into. My parents said, you have taken leave of your senses. Fast forward to the year 2000, he restored it again, this time to perfection, and he recently sold it at auction for a little over $5 million. My friend Mark Manning one time asked me if I wanted to ride in his new Tesla. These things have legendary acceleration, and I remember saying, yeah, I would love a ride, but how about we take it to the drag strip in town and see what it will do? Well, we did, and it ran mid-11s with ease, heroic launch after heroic launch, definitely made me a lover of electric cars, and Teslas have amazing technology built in. The future is right now, however, they are a little pricey. Hey, all the good stuff always is, right? Next on the auto ambush. It's like a big puzzle. I love puzzles. He's helped some students learn to love puzzles too. It's a shop class at Bernalillo High School that I would have loved to have when I was in school. And a lowrider for the community put together by the community. Don't miss this hydraulically boosted ride. I think New Mexicans have been at the front of this trend from the beginning. I mean, if you think about lowriders, they are older classic cars that have many new and updated parts to make them drive and run a lot better. In this case, low and slow. 
We are home to what is considered the lowrider capital of the world. That's the Espanola Valley, and we have seen and cruised in some of the best lowriders around. They are super fun and amazingly eye-popping with those wild paint jobs. Welcome back to Auto Ambush. From Espanola to Albuquerque's west side, we checked out an APD squad car that can drop and squat with the best lowriders around. September 2019, just before this Ford Crown Victoria went under the knife. Oh. We saw the incredible power of these hydraulically boosted rides. Now a fully functioning patrol car that can drop, bounce, squat, and bump with the best low riders around. Everybody is just blown away. When you see the car, it is gorgeous. You can tell that people put their heart and soul into this vehicle. Car clubs and businesses donated time, money, and equipment, but it couldn't have started without an initial $35,000 donation from city council. I was like, absolutely. I mean, this is just fantastic. There's a misperception about lowriders in the lowrider community and who they are and, and what they're about. And I hope this goes a long way to dispel that. Robert Cardenas grew up around lowriders and his hands spent a lot of time on this car. I have a lot of pride in it. It might not be mine, but me and my crew and even my family, my car club, we have a lot of time into this and we put a lot of heart into it. We did it as a community, we did something good. The paint job on this low rider is incredible. These black discolorations in the blue are actually created by setting the paint on fire. There are several layers of painted in stripes and this, what looks to be a sticker, is actually a hand painted on sign and this is all underneath the clear coat. Custom seats up front, the rear is still functional but decorated with art projects. It works like every squad car does, only it can do a lot more. And then now again, up. Oh. That is too much. <laughs> Sorry. They make it look so easy on the cruise nights. Low riders are so popular that a local middle school even held a car show starring only the flashiest and lowest rides around to benefit their art program. These cars are made to be admired. They even had some bicycles with low rider flair. But all that love doesn't mean these rides are widely accepted everywhere. We have a ways to go in terms of really building those bridges and eliminating the perception, the stigmas that, that are around uh, the lowrider community. It was less than five years ago that Albuquerque's no cruising ban was lifted in 2018. Here in New Mexico, we love trucks. And perhaps one of the most famous trucks around is Ty Young's 1941 American La France fire engine. No doubt you've seen it down at Balloon Fiesta over the years. Took a lot of TLC getting it back. To get it the first year, probably about six months, and then months and months and months every year doing something different to it. Ty said his dad bought it back in 1982, spent some time fixing it up and making it pretty. And for over 30 years now, this has been the ultimate chase vehicle for Fiesta, ready to haul a crew and pick up a balloon after a flight. And when the work is done, refreshments are built right into the side. Ty says he's lost count of how much money he's put into repairs because the truck is a family affair. He says his daughter can't wait to take it over one day. For some reason on the way back from Santa Fe, I decided this old pickup would make a great auto ambush and it did. But what I didn't know was this guy's dogs don't give up their seat for anybody. So during our cruise, yeah, you guessed it. I got dog kisses and a little fur shed on me, but hey, I'd do it all over again. Miko and Mesa were good dogs. Students at Bernalillo High School build cars in their shop class. I love working on vehicles because it's like a big puzzle. I love puzzles. Their class was working to build a Land Cruiser when we stopped by. They work with their teacher who told us the town really rallies around his students. I think Bernalillo in general has a strong community and the community is always pulling together, especially when it's stuff to do with the students and the kids. Some of the money for that project comes from other repair jobs they get from the public. Students gain real life experience and fund their build. Sounds very adultish. Not every owner wants their classic updated. Some want their car to be just like how they remembered. And these next two cars are nostalgia inducing time machines for their owners. In this auto ambush, I sample a first year Impala with all the best options. It looks like it could still be on a showroom floor back in 1958. Oh, take a look at that Impala right there. Let's, let's wait by this car and see if the owners come out of the store. 
Hey guys, how's it going? Good morning. I, I take it this is your car here? Yes, yes it is. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's beautiful. Do you have a chance to let me check it out? Sure, go ahead. Oh. 1958 was the first year for the Impala. It was a huge gamble in styling after the popular 57 Chevy. Glitz, glamour, and chrome were now a priority. Sue's example is mint and has all the big options on a big car. It's 19 and a half plus the kit, which makes it about 20 to 21 feet. Dang, over 20 feet long. Yes. So you said 348 tri-power, right? 348 tri-power. Show, show me what you mean when okay. you say tri-power. That's, that's three two-barrel carburetors. As rare as this car is, Sue used to own one just like it and even raced it back in 1960. We used to go to the drag strip and we did, we did a little bit of work on this. Some work with my dad's Dremel. As, as much as I could get to kind of smooth everything out. So That's you were doing do. some intake porting when I was on the 58 Impala back in the day. Here you are now at this point in your life in your 70s and you're back in a 58 Impala convertible. How does that feel? Well, it's something that we just never thought would ever happen. Down memory lane didn't come cheap though. Soon her husband Ron paid almost $100,000 for this rare and desirable classic back in 2011. Smyrna green isn't a color you will hear about very often, but on a 1963 Porsche, it sure does look amazing. And Tammy Dorwart spent countless hours and dollars bringing her high school ride back to life after it was in an accident over 30 years ago. Everybody would always ask, what's your dream car? You know, because I've always been a car person. And I said, I have my dream car. I just need to get it where it needs to be. And three years later, she can't drive her dream car without smiling. The feeling of nostalgia is proven to benefit your mental health. Cars from our youth are huge generators of this, so for these women, their cars are worth every penny they put into them. We've had a lot of fun profiling women-owned cars on the auto ambush. We had a trio of Ford owners. Tina found her Ranchero, a car pickup combo, in Santa Fe back in 2015, got it for 4,500 bucks, and it looks great all fixed up. June got her Ford Falcon in 1977 as a high school graduation present. She's kept it all these years, restoring it in 2012. She shifted that three on the tree transmission like a champ. Priscilla also got her Ford back in high school, the year 1983. It's a gold nugget special that she just had restored and is now outwinning prestigious car shows with. We still have a little time left and I get asked two questions all the time. First, what kind of car do you drive, Eric? Also, what's your favorite auto ambush that you've ever done? Well, I'll show you the answers to both of those questions when we come back. We're back now with just a couple minutes left and I get asked all the time, Eric, what kind of car do you drive? Well, here it is. This is my 2019 Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. I absolutely love how this car looks with its retro design. In fact, I think it's one of the best looking cars made today. It has incredible performance and amazing power as well. Horsepower is 800, torque is 700. At the Albuquerque Dragway, this car ran 10.88 at 129 and that's stock. It's also pretty practical and somewhat economical too. I drive this car every day. It's easy to drive slowly around town and it gets 27 miles per gallon on the highway. Pretty amazing, right? Okay, now moving on, let's talk about my top three favorite auto ambushes that we've done in the last five years. This was not easy, but here they are. This is one of my favorite cars ever built, a 1990 Ferrari F40. These are worth about $2 million today. Funny because that's about how much the original owner paid for it back in 1990. The current owner is Jerry Rail in Albuquerque. He paid a fraction of that when he bought it used in the mid 90s and he took me for a ride around town, a ride I will never forget. That car is very fast and stunning to look at. It's a forever automotive celebrity and still in mint condition with less than 4,000 miles on it. Oh, uh, Corey Gossett and her modified Jeep. That was a crazy ride and I had no idea when I saw her at a gas station what I was in for when I asked her if we could check out her Jeep and take a cruise. I should have known when I saw the Moab stickers on the side that she has no fear and the next thing I know, she's driving up and down hills, going through ditches. We nearly put it on its side, but to her, it was just another day cruising in the Jeep. Jim Johnson's 1929 Ford has maybe the best story I've ever heard about a car. 
It looks like and is a high quality hot rod, but back in 1971, Jim literally dug this abandoned car out of the ground near Grant's. All that was sticking up was the windshield, and look at what he was able to turn it into. He was 25 years old at the time, spent 10 years building it, now over 70, he's put about 150,000 miles on it. Keep on cruising, Jim, keep on cruising. Well, that's a wrap for the auto ambush. Don't miss all of our new auto ambushes on Fridays on our 4 p.m. newscasts. Thanks for joining us.